congratulations. You made it to the end of our uh, third day of our conference. Um, I'm going to try and keep the remarks today brief for a few reasons. Um, one is because the leaderboard is fired up and I know everybody wants to uh, see who the winner is. And two, because I for one forgot how uncomfortable pants with buttons are. So I just want to take the opportunity to share with all of you um, that CSH CSHA has just adopted a three-year strategic plan. And we want to share a few highlights with you before we say goodbye. Um, I want to thank those of you that contributed your insights and opinions in the development of this plan. And you know who you are. <clears throat> I can't see the slide, but I know Lisa's doing it. Okay. Um, so in the plan, we've established um, one big overarching audacious goal for ourselves and our field. And that is to have 500 school-based health centers in California by the year 2030. Why? There are 10,000 schools in California and only 291 school-based health centers. As Mary Jane shared earlier this week, um, that represents only about 4% of school-age students that have access to a school-based health center. We believe that at least 1,000 schools should have school-based health centers. There are enough equity and access issues to legitimately expect and demand it. Having more centers will obviously help kids and families and schools and communities, and it will help build our movement, our strength and our visibility. It will, it will increase our ability to represent a real and significant solution for more California youth. So we plan to double down on school-based health center growth and um, dedicate new efforts to supporting a pipeline of school-based health centers. We'll surely need your help to do this because we can provide resources and support, but you are the one on the grounds in the local communities doing the hard work. So if you're involved in local coalitions or initiatives to start new, set, new centers, please let us know and we would love to help you. I also hope you heard Superintendent Thurman say yesterday, uh, endorsing a past proposal we had to fund new centers. Now, this goal also has a critical equity component, as I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear. Um, our, board, our wise board of directors has helped remind us of that on many occasions. Thank you. So there are lots of kids who need more health care, especially now, but we want to use our organizational strength and resources to interrupt the patterns of systemic racism and the unequal distribution of resources, especially for Black and Indigenous, indigenous youth and communities. We therefore want those centers to be located in schools that need them most, at least 80% in Title I schools with high rates of low-income students and in schools serving at least 90% students that are, in black, that are Black, Indigenous, or other students of color. We know that these students, together with English language learners, LGBTQ youth, special education, and those involved in the foster and legal systems, are not just at risk or underserved, but come from families and communities with, that have had their civil rights forcibly removed from them over generations and still today. We know school-based health centers are only one part of a much larger, solu larger solution, but we want our resources as a state and as an organization devoted to redressing that harm and damage. This is central to our efforts to address racial disparities in health and education. And that feeds into our first three-year goal. So that first one we just talked about was our 10-year goal. And now I wanna talk about four of the six three-year goals we've established in our plan. And I uh, wanted to offer that we can post the full version of this plan uh, on the, when we share the slides and presenters if folks are interested. So this one is not just about the equity work that we want to support out there with you in the field, which we've talked about quite a lot, but CSHA has also started really important work internally as an employer, a purchaser, and as a nonprofit corporate citizen to recognize some deeply embedded values, systems, beliefs, and practices of white supremacy in our own culture, decision-making, and structure. We're going to be working with some masterful outside experts to help us through this because one does not dismantle system, systemic racism oneself. 
We also do want to acknowledge and confront historical racism and, and present day racism in health, education, and sometimes school-based health centers themselves through our policy, communications, and program work. We want to center equity and amplify blue, black voices and BIPOC voices and youth voice. Part of that means continuing a 10 year long journey that we have begun with the young adults on our youth board to give them more meaningful roles and voices and choices with substantive professional development. Some of, we, some of you may know the CHDP program, which stands for Child Health and Disability Prevention. One of my favorite moments from Tuesday was Catherine Lampe from the Native American Health Center referring to it as the Child Health Disparities Prevention Program. And I just love that image that all of us working in school-based health centers are using our roles to reduce and prevent child and adolescent health disparities. Or to quote a combination of uh, our speakers, Alicia the Dragon Slayer and Superintendent Thurman, let us collectively slay the man-made pandemic dragon of racism. On to our second goal. Um, and I mentioned earlier, we believe that growing the number of school-based health centers is in itself really important. We're leaning into this goal at a time when centers are destabilized by COVID and its impact, but they are doubly or triply needed because of the health, economic, mental health, and, and, and equity impact of the past year. We plan to up our game, outreach to, in school-based health centers specifically, and to dial back a little some of the broader work we've been doing in other areas of school health that are not specifically school-based health centers. After all, we're the only statewide organization dedicated to school health centers. We know you need our help to get more clinics on campus. We plan to educate more school communities and other groups about the value of school-based health centers, measuring and demonstrating that value, and providing more startup support in a variety of ways. We want to help get youth involved. And this might also include pilot testing of some new models of care, especially in rural areas, or helping advance from a wellness center or a mobile van to a brick and mortar clinic. Again, we want to invest in the schools and regions with the highest rates of disinvestment in health, education, and youth of color. But more is not enough. We also want better school-based health centers. We want to help you be the best versions of yourselves in every way. Better quality outcomes, better programs, better youth engagement, more integration with your schools, and more financially sustainable. We also want to help you operate as well as possible in this hybrid world, so we plan some new COVID-related resources soon, as well as timely and topical webinars, on telehealth and how to address racism in your midst. You'll see some of our other key content areas on the slide, trauma screening and how to do this really well, really safely and with dignity and respect for youth um, in a school setting, substance use, including screening, prevention and interventions, youth engagement and overall program sustainability. We already co-launched a national collaborative improvement and innovation network or COIN, we're not the leads, we're participating. And with five school-based health centers across the state, we're excited to bring some of our findings to all of you. We'll be doing lots of things to enhance our health, including making our website easier to navigate and even richer with resources. And finally, more state support for school-based health centers. Policy advocacy has always been core to CSHA's history and mission. And again, we're the only organization exclusively dedicated to advocating for California school-based health centers. We learned that our members and partners really value this role. We're one of the only large states without an office of school health and without direct funding for school-based health centers. We've seen even more starkly with COVID how much we need that. We also need much more coordination and integration between the health and education sectors. So we'll keep ch chipping away and pushing forward in Sacramento with focused outreach, communication, and legislative action. We'll keep hosting advocacy days with youth and adults. Please join us for those. They, trust me, they are empowering and a lot of fun. We'll keep working with you on some local advocacy um, at your city, school district, or county level. And here, we really need you to make your work more visible. 
by hosting tours, sharing your stories and pictures and successes and challenges, and telling us when things change for you. Please reach out, let's do this together. Speaking of which, please vote if you can. The last day to register to vote in California is October 19th. I think Superintendent Thurmond or Dr. Smith Arriaga mentioned that 16 and 17 year olds may be eligible to pre-register if they will be a voting age in an upcoming election. To so talk to your young people about this, what a great opportunity for civic engagement. And that just about wraps it up. So I want to um, again remember our dear friend and colleague, Selena Mendoza, who I know all of us and many of you miss. Um, and a reminder that this um, conference was a tribute to Selena's memory and all her great work. Thank you, Selena. I also want to thank once again our sponsors, our exhibitors, our presenters, our brain breakers that I know you loved. Uh, we heard about that a lot in the comments. And I especially want to thank the incredible staff at CSHA for all their work in pulling this pretty mammoth event together. So I want to particularly call out Marcel Reynolds, Amy Ranger, Sierra Julio. They were really the heart of our team, but everyone came together to put this together. So Esma Ahmad, Lisa Eisenberg, Jessica Dyer, Haley Dixon, Maria Salzano, our interns, Jeannie Aguinaldo and Jenny Sang, and then our, our consultant, Kristen Anderson, and our phenomenal partners at the Los Angeles Trust for Children's Health, um, which includes Lillian Orta, Nina Wynn, Kelly Bui, and of course, the unreplaceable Mary Jane Puffer, and our consultant in the Central Valley Health Policy Institute, Heather Berg. Thank you all so much. We're gonna make information from the presentations available as soon as possible, so please keep your eyes out. I know folks are eager to see those and also share them with colleagues, which is um, you know, the biggest compliment you can pay us. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, leaderboard. Uh, let's see. No, maybe this will come as no surprise. Let's see, start with the bronze prize. The bronze prize goes to Chloe Simone Alvarez. I think I can't see the last name on there. Alvarado, I believe it is. Congratulations, Chloe. Uh, we'll present you with your gift later. And then battling for the top two throughout the last couple of days. It's been a tight race, but we give the silver to Stephanie Ocampo. Congratulations, Stephanie. And our very number one place from the Berkeley High School Health Center, Hannah Shirell. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right, Hannah. Congratulations to all three of you. That is the end of our event. Um, it's been a beautiful, sometimes intense, often lighthearted couple of days. We love you all in the work you do so much. It feels like lifeblood for us to be connected to you in this way. We're so grateful for your um, participation and we look forward to your feedback on this event. I think you may have heard that we are considering making a virtual event um, more part of our regular operations and are so glad to see people out this week that might not have been able to come in person. So we will say goodbye for now. Um, go out there, do great work, take care of yourselves and each other and our youth, be safe and please be well. Thank you. <laughs>